سلام الله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كلام الله جل وعلا for indeed the best speech is the speech of Allah سبحانه وتعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم and the best guidance is the guidance of our noble prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها and the worst of affairs the newly invented matters فإن كل محدثة بدعة for indeed every newly invented matter is an innovation and every innovation lead astray and lead in the hellfire. We seek refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the hellfire. I mean. I welcome all of you once again to continue the reading from the explanation of this great hadith, the hadith of Jibreel, the hadith number two from the 40 hadith compiled by Imam al Nawawi rahimahullah. Still reading from the book al Minha Rabbaniya, the explanation of our noble Shaykh al Alama, Dr. Salah bin Fawzan al Fawzan, Hafidahullah ta'ala wa ghafara lahu wa liwalidayh wa lil Muslimin wa Muslimat. Ameen. Continue reading the explanation of the pillar, the last pillar of Iman. Al Imanu bil Qadr. To believe in the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The last point you mentioned that the fruits, some of the fruits of Iman, having belief in the qadr and the qadr, to give you tranquility, peace of mind, ease, walhamdulillah. Why? Because you know, you believe that everything happened by Allah's leave. Nothing happens without his permission subhanahu wa ta'ala so this gives you tranquility and peace you won't grieve on things that you doesn't come your way 
If things doesn't come your way, say, Alhamdulillah. Allah didn't want it for me. And you move on, mashallah. Don't sit there, why me? Because I'm this, because of that, because of him, because of that. La. Say, Alhamdulillah, I tried my best. I didn't get it. Hey. Just don't be negligent. You gotta understand. Make efforts. Put forward the means. But if you didn't get it, Allah didn't want it for you. That's it. And you go home, Alhamdulillah. Likewise, if things are going good for you, you, you because of the Qadr, you know that Allah want that to happen to you. Yes, mashallah, you went and get a degree and you worked hard for it. Alhamdulillah, but Allah wants that good for you, so you don't grow arrogant. But you still thank Allah and be grateful, okay? And that's the believer, alhamdulillah. Likewise with that, your life will have, you will live in tranquility and peace, mashallah. As we give an example before, some people, subhanAllah, they panic, they lose control, they have temper for the little things. Example of traffic. Some people, they get in a traffic jam and they be, they be another person. Start yelling and cursing and his high blood pressure go up. Why? You're stuck already. So it's not like because you're going to start yelling and cursing, your, your car going to have wings and you're going to fly. You're already stuck. So make it easy on yourself. See, the believer who believes in the Qadr, he's like, look, alhamdulillah, it's not me. If I know there is a traffic, you avoid it right or wrong. Hey, sometimes they tell you, this, this modern technology, they tell you, look, there's a jam traffic in here. It's an alternative route. But she didn't know. Just something happened. Everything was fine. And then it was an accident. They shut down all the seven lines. All of them shut down. And you're stuck. What are you going to do now? The believer, he's going to remember Allah. He's going to say, Alhamdulillah. I only go where Allah wants me to go. Allah decreed for me to be in this car, in this place at this time. Let me make the best of it. Bring a book and read. You have Mus'haf, read. Turn that situation to a benefit for you. You say, Alhamdulillah, Allah wants to give me this time. I need to finish something. I need to read this book. I need to do my homework. And now, Alhamdulillah, you're cool. Before you know it, they like, okay, s s move on. How can that? Sometimes the same thing. Sometimes a person goes to the dentist, go to any appointment. And they told him, okay, well, well, wait. He said, I got an appointment at 11. And it's already 11. They're like, just wait. Sir, wait. No, I can't wait. I have an, 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 an appointment. I want to fight everybody now. And then they may like just give him some hard time. And they let him sit there for another 45 minutes. Right or wrong? <laughs> but if he's, they say, sir, we know you have an appointment, but we're a little backed up. Can you just wait until we call you? No problem. Take your time. Actually, it's good for me. I need to read a little bit. I got a chapter. That I, chapter of what? Kitab al-Tawheed. You never know. Maybe da'wah. That kafir person said, like, this guy is different. Look at him. People usually, they lose it. This man, he's like, actually, he's like, oh, that's good for me. I, I, need, to, I need this time to read something. Well, what are you reading? What's more important? Tawheed. What's Tawheed? And you never know. They may take shahada. Based on your attitude. I know. Likewise, we continue. The Sheikh he says, a part of that, having believe in the qada and the qadr, you believe also that the slaves, even though you believe that nothing happened by Allah's except by Allah's leave, nothing happened except by Allah's permission and will, Subhanahu wa Taala. But with that, the slaves. They have actions that they do. Willingly, they choose to do those actions. No one is compelled or forced to do anything. Look, for example, anyone here is forced to be here in this class at this moment? Raise your hand. Raise both hands, actually. Huh? 
Anyone here is forced? No, you choose to be here, right? You want to be here. Okay? So a person choose to be Muslim or not, choose to be a righteous or not, a person, the Muslim, choose to pray. You know, some people, they don't want to pray. They don't want to pray. It's not like somebody tell them, if you pray, we're going to do this to you. He don't want to pray. It's time for Salat. You find two individuals in the same house, two brothers. One came to pray and one is watching the, the final four, for example. You know what I'm saying? He was watching...